we're saying Merry Christmas again. Well, it's that time of the year again. That's right. It is the holiday season. Today is Christmas Eve, but for most individuals, we recognize this as the war on Christmas season because we all know that the radical left wants to destroy Christmas. Although, if you'll remember, last year, Republicans actually declared victory in the war on Christmas and Trump's family said, it's over. We now don't have the political correctness that we used to. I mean, people are actually saying Merry Christmas. You can say Merry Christmas again. Yes, Isn't that yes. so nice, Janine? I love it. I love Christmas trees. I love Santa over here. Thank you, President Trump, for letting us say Merry Christmas again. Things are different now. The war on Christmas is over. You know, we're getting near that beautiful Christmas season that people don't talk about anymore. They don't use the word Christmas because it's not politically correct. You go to department stores and they'll say Happy New Year and they'll say other things and it'll be red. They'll have it painted, but they don't say, well, guess what? We're saying Merry Christmas again. So there you have it. There is no more war on Christmas, according to Republicans. Although the radical left this year has some new tricks up their sleeves. And being a member of the radical left, I know firsthand about what they are doing. They're plotting against Christmas, and this time they're trying to bring back the war on Christmas by using a global pandemic to cancel Christmas. Can you believe that? Republicans win the war on Christmas, and the radical left finds some new way to attack this sacred and holy holiday. It's despicable, but nonetheless, we do need to sound the alarms, and I want people to know about the left's War on Christmas. So, for more on this, we will go to the Humanist Report's War on Christmas correspondent, Tucker Carlson, I mean Tucker Carlson, who's going to explain to us specifically how the left is using COVID-19 to stop Christmas from taking place this year. Christmas is almost here, the best week on the American calendar, the happiest time that we have. This year, of all years, Christmas has a deeper resonance, maybe closer to its original meaning. In a time of crisis, you inevitably start thinking about those things you otherwise might ignore if you were busier and more content. Things like, what's the purpose of all of this? What matters most in my life? And what happens when it ends? In general, people tend to become more spiritual, more openly religious, when they're suffering. It's not an accident. In fact, it may be the upside. You get to think beyond the next Amazon delivery for a minute. Of course, not everyone is in favor of that. All of the focus on the big enduring things, the focus on our families, the focus on what's true and what's not true, the focus on eternity itself, all of that tends to diminish the power of the people in charge of our temporal world for obvious reasons. We take our leaders less seriously when we're reminded that they're just people slightly ludicrous, just like we are, when we're reminded that they too will pass, all of us will. If death is inevitable, and that may be the one thing you're not allowed to say in this country, but it's still true, then maybe we should pause before we destroy the living in the name of trying to eliminate it. Politicians understand this threat. They've figured out that Christmas is bigger than they are, and therefore it's a threat to them. Better cancel it. And in fact, they're trying hard. Of, of minimizing travel to the extent possible. Sometimes it's absolutely necessary, but to the extent possible, don't travel, don't congregate together. I know how difficult that is. Right now, that just should not be done. To the best of our capabilities, we should avoid travel and avoid congregate. Avoid congregate settings. So say what you will about Tony Fauci, he has mastered, after many decades, the weird euphemisms of Washington, D.C. What Fauci is saying here in English is that you need to avoid going to church. You need to avoid your own family. Those are the congregate settings he just mentioned. Listen to Joe Biden explain how many Americans will die if we don't cancel Christmas. We're likely to lose another 250,000 people dead between now and January. You hear me? Because people aren't paying attention. You hear me? 250,000 Americans dead. You hear me? A quarter million people. That's a lot of people. In fact, it's more than the total number of combat deaths over the entire American Civil War, which, by the way, lasted four years, condensed into a single month. 
Imagine a Gettysburg every day of the week. You can't imagine that. It's too horrible. In the first 30 days, we would lose the equivalent of Reno. The next month, Scottsdale, then Lubbock, then Buffalo. Pretty soon, there would be nobody left in America. You hear me? Come on, man. Do what you're told. Cancel Christmas. So look, I've got to hand it to Tucker Carlson. As a member of the left, he does have us all figured out. I mean, by us telling people to be a little bit more safer this year, maybe don't travel because we don't want to contract a highly contagious deadly virus or give it to someone else. Actually, we don't really care about the virus. All we care about is canceling Christmas. He knows exactly what we're thinking. And really, you wouldn't be able to see through this insidious agenda unless you are big-brained like Tucker Carlson. Now, in that nearly 13-minute long segment, Tucker Carlson quotes numerous public officials that warns residents to minimize contact with others during this holiday season in an effort to slow the spread of the virus because hospitals are starting to reach full capacity in multiple states and it's getting scary. But he argues that any time they discourage you from trying to celebrate Christmas as you normally would, as if there wasn't a global pandemic, that's just more evidence that they actually want to cancel Christmas. It's the new way that the left is waging a war on Christmas, and he's the only one who sees it, guys. Now, the way that he proves that this really is about a war on Christmas and not the pandemic, he points out how public health experts say that Black Lives Matter riots are safe, and yes, I'm sure that they literally say said that riots themselves are safe and that you should riot. <laughs> but celebrating Christmas isn't safe. So in other words, what he's saying is that public officials have different standards for different things. Christmas bad, riots good. And at face value, I understand how you could see this as a double standard, but in actuality, research shows that Black Lives Matter protests actually didn't contribute to a spike in COVID-19 cases. And perhaps this is because they didn't take place indoors. They took place outside and most people were wearing masks at these events. Whereas during the holiday season, I mean, it's cold outside. So you want to congregate indoors where it's a lot more difficult to do social distancing. But fear not, because as a member of the left who sees Tucker's argument, I understand that there's going to be a portion of the population that just doesn't take these warnings to heart and they're still going to celebrate Christmas as they normally would as if there was no pandemic. But I've come up with a compromise. Uh? A compromise that will allow us to save Christmas but still take the virus seriously. So what if the people who no matter what are gonna travel, gonna celebrate Christmas, what if they all wore masks? <laughs> Hang on, so you don't wanna wear masks but you also wanna celebrate Christmas as you normally would as if there wasn't a global pandemic. Um, okay, so really what we need is, because I'm not the right messenger, what we need is someone like Tucker Carlson with a clear and decisive message about masks. So hopefully, he has a really clear message on this. Dissent used to be a defining feature of American life, but no more. Now we have mandatory consensus. Masks are good. Anyone who questions the utter goodness of masks is bad. What they're really telling you is that masks are magic. What appears to be a flimsy cotton face covering is in fact a holy amulet that protects us from disease more reliably than any modern medicine. Of course masks work. Everyone knows that. Dozens of research papers have proved it. In South Korea, Japan, Hong Kong, the rest of Asia where coronavirus has been kept under control, masks were key. Great. So now we've got some issues. Now it seems as if Christmas actually is in serious trouble because if we refuse to cancel Christmas, but at the same time refuse to wear masks and follow the proper protocols to ensure that we don't spread this highly contagious deadly virus, then what do we do? If my compromise won't work, if Tucker Carlson won't tell his viewers to do the appropriate things that protect themselves, if they are in fact going to celebrate Christmas regardless, what do we do? It seems as if Christmas might actually be in trouble. After winning the war on Christmas, it's come roaring back, and now Christmas is in more danger than ever. Support this podcast by becoming a patron at patreon.com forward slash humanist report.